Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington from Learn Your Land. I'm hanging out here in the woods in western Pennsylvania in mid-spring. And I know what some of you are probably wondering right now. Did you see any morel mushrooms? Are you looking for morel mushrooms? Where are the morel mushrooms? Is this a video on morel mushrooms? Well, I know it might sound like blasphemy when I say this because I am an avid mushroom hunter. I enjoy getting out looking for mushrooms, putting out videos on mushrooms, and writing articles on mushrooms throughout the year. However, it's not my primary goal to find morel mushrooms today. Even though the conditions seem to be right, you know, it rained a couple days ago, I'll be okay if I walk out of the woods today without seeing a single morel mushroom. Now, if I do find some, of course I'll be elated. I'll bring some home for the table, I'll cook them up, maybe I'll share a picture or two on social media. But if I don't find any morel mushrooms today, I know that life will continue to move forward. You know, there's a common saying amongst mushroom hunters, and it's that, you know, morels are the prize in the spring. And that the consolation prize is another edible mushroom known as dryad saddle or pheasant back. And the Latin name is polyporous squamosis. It's a polypore mushroom. It's edible when young. It grows on stumps, dead and decaying logs. It doesn't taste quite like morel mushrooms, though it is edible. And so that's the consolation prize. You know, morels are the prize, the consolation prize, dryad saddle. But think about this mindset for a second. You either find one prize or you find the consolation prize and that's it. Nothing else. Today wasted if you didn't find anything else but those two. But that's kind of a limited mindset in my opinion because as I take a look around I can literally see dozens and dozens of wildflowers. Species that I can interact with. All prizes to me. I won't see them in a couple weeks. They're only available right now for a very short window. I look up at the canopy and I see a slew of trees just putting out their leaves, just putting out flowers. Two weeks ago, seemingly, they weren't doing much, at least in humans' eyes. These are all prizes to me. I could see spring migrants coming through, I could see signs of animal wildlife, things that I couldn't see a couple weeks ago, things that I might not see in a couple weeks or months from now. These are all prizes to me. And so if we are just going out there, just to find morel mushrooms, and that's it, nothing else, I just want my morel mushrooms, that's my prize or I'm gonna be mad. Or maybe the consolation prize. Okay, well I found the consolation prize. At least it wasn't a day wasted in the woods, right? Hmm. Well. I think we're setting ourselves up for disappointment, if that's your mindset. And who really wants to come home from a day spent in the woods disappointed? You know, regardless of how many species or what kind of species are in our baskets the second we step foot out of the woods, understand that the prize itself was given to you all along. The prize was embedded in the time that you spent in nature that day. Time spent interacting with the land in whatever way that you interacted with it. And so in this video, what I'd like to do is introduce you to another prize that you can familiarize yourself with. No, it's not morel mushrooms. You can't really eat it like morel mushrooms. However, for mushroom hunters in the eastern half of North America, perhaps you will come across this species when looking for morel mushrooms. Today we're here to talk about an interesting member of the broom rape family. And this plant is known as Canophilus americana, or American cancer root, squaw root, or bear corn. This is a very interesting member of the plant kingdom because it does not photosynthesize and it does not contain any true leaves. So wait a minute, it's a member of the plant kingdom but it does not photosynthesize, it does not contain any true leaves, what the heck is going on here? That's a good question. It's a parasite. More specifically, it's a hollow parasite or an obligate parasite, meaning it absolutely requires a host tree in order for it to carry out its nutritional needs. And Canopolis americana can be found this time of year growing fresh up from the ground. You might be able to see it all year round, but typically those structures are much older and they're actually dead, they're not alive. And they kind of resemble pine cones coming up from the soil. And they grow in clusters, and these reproductive structures are tan, yellow, cream colored, light brown. And they grow to be about four to eight inches in height. Now, this name, Canophilus, comes from cono, or cone, and folos, or scale, because it resembles a scaled cone, almost like a pine cone coming up from the ground. In Americana, this one grows in the eastern half of North America. There's another species, Canophilus alpina, which grows in the southwestern United States, in New Mexico, in Central America. Now, believe it or not, this plant actually contains flowers. And if you look really close, you will see the flowers this time of year. The casual observer walking by, you know, from five and a half, six feet up in the air, looking down, probably won't notice these flowers, might not even notice this plant but we know a little bit. We go down and we look for these flowers and we can see them. They're white, they're cream colored flowers. They're kind of neat, they're very interesting. And what is really, really interesting about this is that there's no nectar produced from these flowers, nor is there a strong fragrance. So insects don't really visit this plant. So how is this plant able to carry out pollination so that it can go to seed? Well, we see that Canopolis americana is able to self-pollinate very effectively. 
and on average one plant can produce up to 100,000 seeds. Now bear corn, this plant is a favorite food amongst black bears in the early spring when they come out of hibernation because it's very high in fiber. White-tailed deer also browse in this plant and the seeds are eaten by mice and other small mammals which act as the primary seed dispersers. Canopolis americana, as I mentioned before, grows in association with oak trees, but not just any oak tree, members of the red oak group or the black oak group. So this would be Quercus rubra, Quercus velatina. We don't really see this growing in association with white oak trees. And if you're looking for this, you'll see these clusters of Canopolis americana coming up about 5, 10, 15 feet away from the base of the trunk. You don't really see this growing up against the trunk. Now what's really going on here is quite fascinating. Canopolis americana, or bear corn, is actually parasitizing a mycorrhizal fungus through a connection known as a hostorium. This is where the parasite attaches to the mycorrhizal fungus, and the mycorrhizal fungus is symbiotically working in association with the oak tree. So the mycorrhizal fungus is pulling up water and minerals from the soil, shipping that over and transferring it to the oak tree, which in turn is producing sugars, sending that over to the mycorrhizal fungus. And then Canopus americana is kind of capitalizing on this because it's connecting to the mycorrhizal fungus and extracting some of those sugars as well. Now Canopus americana, even though it is parasitized in the oak tree, it's not really damaging the oak tree in any way. These plants only live to be about 10 years old. I think 13 is the max, so it grows to be about a teenager, then it eventually withers away. The first four to five years, it's spent as a tubercle or an underground structure in the ground. The next four to five years, it produces these reproductive structures. In the last two years, it's senescing and dying back. And if the tubercles get too big, too strong, I mean, they can grow up to five meters underneath in the soil. The oak tree's defense mechanism will produce a lot of tannins and actually poison the Canopolis americana and kill it off. So we don't see them really competing. Now, traditionally, this plant hasn't really been eaten as a food by many, many, many different cultures. I'm sure by some culture this has been eaten. It is high in fiber, so if you want to try it, I mean, it's not really toxic in any way, at least in uh, small quantities. However, it has been used medicinally, mainly for menstrual support and reproductive health. So if that's something that you want to look into, I encourage you to do more research. Maybe work with somebody who has worked with this in the past. But again, this is Canopolis americana, a very interesting prize that you can find this time of year when you're looking for your beloved morel mushrooms. And if you don't find your beloved morel mushrooms, well, that's okay because you'll probably run into Canopolis americana anyway. Thanks so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. Hey, if you want to stay up to date with me with the information that I plan on releasing, if you're looking to learn something new about the woods that you like to frequent, I encourage you to check out learnyourland.com, which is a community and database of naturalists and a lot of information about the flora, the fauna, and the fungi, the ecosystems that we live in. You could sign up for the newsletter there. We can stay in touch that way. Also, if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're watching this on YouTube, or if not, head on over to www.youtube.com and you can subscribe that way. Thanks again for watching this video. Truly appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.